Let's take a quick run through another computer. This is a tower computer that I put together from various parts, and old parts and new parts. And we'll look at the front and look at the back and see what we've got. On the front, we've got a power button, got a reset button, a few lights. We've got a floppy drive. This is a floppy disk. This is the storage device um, that was used before CDs and also before USB cards and memory cards. So you put a floppy disk in there. The main problem was that the information was stored magnetically on there, on the disk, and so if you put a magnet on there, then the information would be gone. This happens to have pictures on it, okay? And um, not a whole lot of them, and not high quality, because there's just not enough space. Here's our compact disk drive. This is a 24 speed, so it goes 24 times faster than a CD would play music. So if a CD takes an hour to play music, this goes 24 times faster than that. It could um, copy that same data into the computer in tw 1 24th of the time, so like in three minutes. So that's pretty fast. Here's a DVD reader, and this was installed in the computer separately. Um, the computer's not plugged in or anything, but um, this would play a DVD. All right. Let's look on the back of the computer. And we're going to see a lot of the same things that we see on most computers nowadays. We're going to see a power outlet at the top, just standard power. We've got a toggle switch to turn on and off the power. And then we've got various ports. These ports are called, um, I don't know if they have a regular name, but they're just called like PC ports. One is used for the keyboard, one is used for the mouse. These were keyboards and mouses that were used before the current USB kind. Here's two USB ports. Here is a serial port that used to be used for connecting to the internet. This, used, this is the old printer port, another serial port. Sometimes you could also have a mouse plugged into these. Um, you can see that the little piece of metal that's supposed to go over the top here to keep the dust out, that piece of metal is not there. And there's some space for a lot of cards here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. And in fact, there's only one, two. Let's look at the two cards we've got. This card is clearly a video card because it's got the blue video. So this is where the picture is coming out. And it's got... Um, uh, TV out, so this would go into maybe a TV, certain kind of TV, a VGA out, a VGA in actually, so we could have video get, go into this card, and looks like it's got stereo sound in and out. Down here, this one's actually the audio card, and so it's got a line in. Notice that these are not the blue and pink and green. This was before those colors were standardized. It's got a line in, a mic in, a line out for sound coming out, and a speaker out. And then it's got a joystick port, so if you're playing a game, you'd plug into that. This type of tower computer, you would have screws on the back. I've taken the screws out already, and then you could pull off the side of the computer and look on the inside. So that's pretty convenient and pretty speedy. So let's take a look on the insides of this computer real quick, starting from top to bottom. We've got our secondary storage devices. We've got our two optical drives. The top one was the DVD. The bottom one was the CD. You'll see our power cords right here. That's our power. We could plug, pull the power right out, put the power back in. Um, these gray cables, that's the information data cable, that's where the information goes in or out. Okay, we've got another, here's our CD drive. Same thing, we've got our power cable right there. That should easily, more or less easily plug it, pull out. Right back in. Data cable. Here is our floppy drive. Again, it's got power right there and data. Here is a hard drive right here, and this hard drive 
It's a Max Tor hard drive. And I can't see how much storage it has. But I don't imagine it has a whole lot of storage. And again, it's got power, data. Now at the bottom here, you can see we have another speaker on the front of the computer. And this black and red goes right onto the main board there. Our main board is not green like normal. It's a gold main board. So when I built this computer, I built the, um, I had the case. It was an old case. I put in brand new drives. So I brought it, put in a brand new DVD drive. I had a CD drive for a different from a different computer. I used the same floppy drive that was already in there. I put in a brand new hard drive. And you'll notice that this hard drive is not taking up all the space. You could actually put three hard drives in there. I could put in another optical drive up here if I wanted to. And I could put in another small drive here either another floppy drive or nowadays there's the memory card drives. Um, and then I, I bought the main board. I screwed that on. The main board will not fit inside every single case. So you have to make sure whichever main board you are buying that your case that you have is going to fit. Um, and there are different designations, code, um, letter codes that tell you which case it is, and which main board will fit in each case. And so this main board is screwed down there. Now up here is our processor. And for a while, computers actually came, um, for a short while, where you could put two processors inside of them. And so one processor would be running like your music, and another one would be running maybe your, your, product, your document that you're working on. You'll see that there's a heat sink and a fan right on top of this processor. Um, let's see if we can get that out. Let's put this, lay this computer down. And we'll, we'll see if we can do it or not. Usually a processor has a little clip or something. Trying to push on there on just the right spot. I can't, can't see. I can see that there's this metal ring that goes around, and that metal ring is clipped in down underneath over here. Oh, I got it. There it is. There's the fan. And I'm taking the fan right off. That's kind of strange because I thought the fan would have power plugged into it. But I can see now that I didn't have any power plugged into that fan. That could be a problem. Or maybe it accidentally got unplugged. I'm not really sure. So here's our processor. This is, again, an Intel processor. It's called the Pentium Pro processor. And to get this out, there's a little lever right here that I have to pull up very carefully. Well, maybe I have to push it out first, then pull it out, pull it up. There. This socket where the processor went is called a socket 8 processor, or a socket 8. It would only fit certain processors. I'm going to try to pull this out really carefully because <laughs> if Anything is damaged on the processor. This is the brain of the computer. This part alone in a brand new computer could be $500 of the cost of the computer just for the processor. You'll notice um, this processor is a little bit older than the one we looked at at the other video. And you can see that it has um, the pointy pins. And those pins go into that socket there. Now, you've got to put them in exactly right. If you bend even one of those, even a little bit, and it doesn't go in to the socket correctly, then that's it. The processor is ruined. A $500 piece of equipment, um, originally $500, now this same processor would probably sell for maybe $50. Um, 
if you broke any of those pins, it would be a piece of junk. I mean, it would be, I, I don't even know how you'd be able to fix it because those pins are so small. I mean, you can see my fingers, they're just tiny. So I'm going to try to put that back in there. It's got to go in exactly right. It should only set in one way. I have to get it lined up just perfectly. Okay, it, it's set in place there. And now I've got to put this lever back down. And that will slide it into place. Okay, and finally, I should put that heat sink back on. I'm amazed that there's not a, um, there wasn't a cable on there to run that fan. That's pretty strange. I mean, a heat sink, a heat sink is good without a fan. I mean, it will take some heat away, but the fan really helps to take heat off of the processor. Okay, so I'm going to put that processor back on there. Put this clip on here. I'm sorry, the heat sink back on there. I've got to put this clip on this side. Maybe I should try it from the other side. There we go. I'm going to put this side in first, then that side. Okay. So, there's my power. I should look around to see if I've got power for that. Well, I've got power here. This is the power coming out of my power supply. That's my power supply right there. Sometimes those burn out. This one came with the case, so I did not have to buy a separate power supply. Now, this would be easy to take out. I can see a screws there. If I wanted to put it in a different power supply, I could do that. Um, the power supply comes with the cables. These might cost, I don't know, $30, $40. You can see it goes right into the main board here because most of the energy is needed by the main board. Um, some of the energy, of course, has to go into the drives. So each drive has its own electricity. And then here's a cord here an extra power cord. And this, strangely, looks like exactly what we need for that fan. Try to plug that in right there. There we go. So, now that fan will actually run. That's nice. This computer has not been turned on recently, so that's probably why we don't know about that. I'm going to move these cables around up here a little bit kind of messy inside. I mean, there's a lot of space. It's kind of like an old car. There was lots of space under the hood, but um, let's see what else we see. Can you see the battery right there? Uh, I'm guessing that battery is dead after the computer's not being plugged in for so long, but these batteries can last years. The battery inside a computer, they're keeping the clock going. Here are the slots where you could put in a card for something, like your video card or your sound card to make the computer be able to do more stuff. It could be a TV card that let you watch TV on your computer, just regular TV. Um, it could be a game card that lets you play a specific game or use a special controller or something. So I see one, two, three slots, three of the big black slots, and then one, two, three, four of the thin white slots. And each of these slots has its own name. I can't remember them at the moment. On these two cards, let's see, this one was the... Um, audio card. You can see that there's a cable here. This is bringing the audio, looks like, from one to the other. And then here's another audio cable here. This audio cable goes up to the, the DVD. So if you're playing a CD in there, there it is. If you're playing a CD in there, the sound would come through that gray little cable, it would go into the sound card, and it could come right out the back of the computer like that. So it actually would not go through the processor at all, which is kind of nice because um, the processor, you know, you wouldn't want the processor doing anything it didn't need to do so that it could go fast. Now this is kind of interesting. Look at these primary storage cards here. These are primary storage. That's where you have... Um, the information on the inside of the computer while the computer is on. And those are little tiny cards. And they're kind of tricky to get out. I don't actually really want to take one out because I've got this riser right here. 
I don't really know what that riser is there, but maybe I'll pull that out for just a second. Let's see what this card is. I'm guessing, based on the look of it, that this card had to be paired with that processor. Because look over here. Here's where that processor w went into the socket 8, and there's this card here that had to go with it. Let's see what it says on it. Skynet. That's kind of cool. Reminds me of a movie. I'm just going to set that aside. Let's see if we can get these memory cards out, just one of them. Um, the catches are a little bit different in here. There's one on that side. Wow, can hardly get my finger in there. There's one on that side. Oh, there it goes. So this is what the memory cards used to look like. And on each of these little chips, or what is called as an integrated circuit, is some space for some memory. Now, how much information each of these stored, it might or might not be on there. Let's take a look. See if we can find out. It says these are Siemens cards. Siemens is a German company. They were made in France. And they have a number on them, and that number tells us how much storage there is but um, we'd have to look it up on the computer to find out. Okay, let's put this back in there. Now this only should go in one way. Notice it's got a notch here. And this, this end is square, but this end has a little notch in it. So let's see if we can figure out how to put it in there. And the way you would put these in, you put them in sideways and then they snap into place if you have them the right way. There we go. I think this is the right way. Yep, there we go, perfect. Okay, so looks like there's a lot of memory in this computer, but this is a much older computer than computers nowadays, so it probably doesn't have as much as a person might expect. Put this back in here. Oh, and as I pushed it in, it snapped right into place. Perfect. So, that was a quick tour of uh, another computer. We're looking at various different things on the inside of the computer. You'll notice that computers have a lot of the same things. Thank you very much for watching.